Hello, Chibian family. Welcome to Voice of a Healing. It's your beloved brother, Jerry Malanda. There are seven Hebrew words for praise in the Bible. And in this series, we are going to study each one of them and how we ought to apply them on a daily basis. Today, we start with the type of praise called Barak. Point number one. The meaning of Barak. Barak is to kneel or to bow, to give reverence to God as an act of adoration. Then what is the meaning of reverence, first of all? It is fear mingled with respect and esteem. According to Proverbs 8, 13 and Proverbs 16, 6, and also Proverbs 9 verse 10, the Bible says the definition of the fear of the Lord is to hate evil and to depart from uh, evil. When we do this, it is actually the beginning of godly wisdom. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12 to verse, uh, 13, to verse 36, uh, the Bible tells us of the sons of Eli, the high priest. They were worthless uh, men, for they practiced the sexual immorality and financial manipulations in the temple of God. So they despised uh, the Lord. This is not the way to reverence God. Even if we kneel down, we bow in church, but if we are living like the worthless sons of uh, Eli, we are not being uh, reverent in the name of Jesus. We are actually despising God and his word. David also, once upon a time in his life, he despised uh, God when he committed adultery and murder. And uh, the book of Second uh, Samuel chapter 12, uh, verse 8 to verse uh, 9, tells us that God said to David through the mouth of Nathan the prophet, I gave you your master's house, Saul's house, and gave you also the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I, the Lord also, would have given you much more. So why have you despised the commandment of the Lord? to do evil in his sight. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife. So David also despised the Lord. I remember in 2009, the Lord came and spoke to me, he said to me, Jerry, do not despise me like David, the man after my own heart, despised me. And if you want me to give you whatever thing, just ask, and I'm going to give you whatever you desire. But do not despise my command. Do not despise me like David did once upon a time, and like also the sons of Eli did despise me when they practiced those sins. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, God said to Samuel, I said indeed that the house of Eli and your father's house would walk before me forever. You are going to be high priest forever, you and your children. But now I, the Lord, I have changed my mind. He says, for those who honor me, I will also honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So God removed completely the family of Eli from being uh, priests. And when actually the word of God and these commandments mean so little in our life, the power of God also is going to be very little in our life. The sons of Eli, they carried the Ark of the Covenant. They shouted, yet the Philistines defeated them. When you despise God by living anyhow, you are going to be a defeated Christian. Point number two, God is not a tyrant. Now, when we talk about the fear of God in Barak, we should never see God as a harsh taskmaster, as a despot or a tyrant. No, but we should see God as a loving father. The Bible tells us that, beloved, now we are children of God. And God, our father, has not given us any spirit of fear that we should fear him as one fears a tyrant, an austere person, or a despot. But God has actually given us the spirit of power, love, and sound 
mind. So God is not like the Greek God Zeus with a lightning rod waiting for you to do any mistake so that he can strike you dead. That's not our God. You need to believe that God is a loving Father. He so loved you in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, there is no fear in love, but the perfect love casts out the fear because fear involves torment. But anyone who fears because he sees God as a tyrant or as a despot or as an austere person has not actually been made perfect in love. Hallelujah. But God wants you to love him and to see him as a loving father. Stop thinking that he's a tyrant, a despot. That is not our God. Point number three. Kneeling is not a form of penance. Now, kneeling in Barak is not a form of penance, which is actually a punishment inflicted on yourself as an outward experience of repentance, an outward also expression of your repentance. We Christians, we do not do any penance. We also do not pay any indulgence to be forgiven of our sins. So all that we need to do, if we want to be forgiven, we just need to confess our sins. And we don't need to beg God to forgive us. The Bible tells us that Jesus is speaking to us in John chapter 16, verse 26 to verse 27. He says, in that day, When you are born again, you will ask in my name. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus once we are born again. And Jesus says, I do not say that I will beg the Father or pray the Father for you. Jesus is not begging the Father to forgive you. No. Why? Because the Father himself loves you because you have loved Jesus and have believed that God sent Jesus and Jesus came forth from God. In the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 10 to verse 14, we see the Pharisee and the publican going together in the temple to pray. The publican did not have to kneel down in penance to be forgiven, but actually he stood on his two feet and pounded his chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And all you need to do actually to be forgiven is to be actually genuine in your heart. So you genuinely repent and forsake your sins and God is going to be faithful and just to forgive you. That's what 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says. If we confess our sins and we forsake them, God is going to be faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all and righteousness. Point number four, pledge of allegiance to Christ. When you and I kneel in prayer in a form of Barak, what we're actually doing, we are pledging allegiance to King Jesus. In the Bible, the book of Romans chapter 14, verse 11, the Bible tells us that as I live, says the Lord, Every knee, including your knee, shall bow, and every tongue shall confess to God. Now, a pledge of allegiance is a promise of loyalty to King Jesus and faithfulness to his constitution of his kingdom. That constitution is found in the Bible. God said to Hosea in Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, For I, the Lord, desire and delight in steadfast loyalty to me, to my word, and to my kingdom. Faithfulness in the covenant relationship that we have, rather than sacrifice. And in the knowledge of God, more than in burnt offering. So when we pledge our allegiance to King Jesus, All of our problems also will submit to Christ's lordship in the name of Jesus. Your cancer is going to bow. The demons that are tormenting you are going to submit to the lordship of Jesus. As it is written in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to verse 11, the Bible tells us that God also has highly exalted Christ and given him a name that is above 
every other name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, our King, every knee shall bow. You are going to receive Christ as your Lord. Every knee shall bow. Of those in heaven, the angels, they bow to Jesus. Of those on earth, you, the born again believer that has pledged allegiance to Christ Jesus, and of those who are under the earth, demons are going to submit to the authority of Christ Jesus and to his Lordship. And of every tongue, the Bible says, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So if you have not made this Jesus Lord over your life, if you have not pledged allegiance to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords in Barak, today is the day that you surrender your life to Christ. Today is today that you pledge your allegiance, your loyalty, steadfast loyalty to the King of Kings and to the constitution of his kingdom found in the Bible in the name of Jesus. And I want you to do so right now. So let me pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Heaven Heavenly Father, I want to give you all the glory and I want to give you all the praise for your sons and your daughters that desires to be, they all desire to be part of this kingdom, to pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And my King and my Savior, I pray for them right now that you forgive them of all the sins in the name of Jesus. You deliver them from the power of darkness and you translate them into the kingdom of the son of your love. And from this day forward, let the blood of Jesus start speaking better things on their behalf in Jesus' name. All the handwritings, uh, requirements that are still standing against them, that are contrary to your will concerning the life, I blot those handwritings in Jesus' precious name. And Father, I give them a brand new start because when they are born again, they are a new creation. All the things are passed away. Behold, all things are new in them and all things are of God. And I command a brand new beginning in their life. In Jesus' precious name, let them be accepted in the beloved Christ Jesus. And I pray that you send forth your spirit of adoption so that they can cry out from this day forward, Abba, Father, in Jesus' precious name, amen. So if you have made this quality decision, welcome into the family of believers. So please contact us and we are going to be able to guide you and help you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I have a testimony that I would like to share with you. So early this year, a boy aged seven had been scheduled to undergo a corrective surgery on his reproductive organ in Glasgow. So during one of our church program, Hope Fan programs that we hold, the mother contacted us requesting prayer so that God is going to intervene in the situation of a son. And on the day that the surgery was supposed to be carried out, the consultant who was assessing the child prior to the surgery and the team discovered that Dr. Jesus had actually intervened and actually the doctors in Glasgow ended up counseling that uh, surgery for the glory of God. So glory be to God for his miracle in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to share a word of knowledge that I received while I was praying, preparing for this episode. As the Lord in a prayer time showed me in a vision, someone with lupus and that person, the body uh, is actually being attacked. The whole immune system he is actually attacking his own tissues and organ. And God wants me to pray for that lupus in the name of Jesus. So let me pray for that lupus in that person in Jesus' precious name. And if also you are suffering from any other autoimmune disease, lay also your hand on your body. And I'm going to pray in Jesus' name. Father, we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise. Because the reason why you have revealed the case of that lupus is because you want to heal it in the name of Jesus. And Father, I give you all the glory and I give you all the praise because you have not changed. And I command that lupus to leave the body of that person in the name of Jesus from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes. 
I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness immediately in Jesus' name. And Father, we bless you. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise because you have not changed. And I pray also for anyone else that is suffering from any autoimmune disease. And I send forth your word right now in the name of Jesus. And I command total healing from the crown of the heads to the tips of the toes right now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, I would like to pray for all of you under the sound of my voice. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, that the, the word of God is the seed. This is a potent seed, the incorruptible seed of the word, like Peter also told us. So I'm going to send forth the word of God in the form of a prayer. And God is going to heal all your sicknesses and all your diseases. The Bible says Jesus heals all manners of sickness and all manners of disease for his glory. He went about still doing good even today and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Sickness and disease are oppressions of Satan. And today, our loving father wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to restore your life for his glory and the glory of the name of Jesus. The name that is above every sickness, every disease, demons bow at the mention of the name of Jesus. They tremble at the mention of the name of Jesus. We serve a living God. He's a consuming fire. And I want you to be in agreement with me because if the two of us shall agree concerning a desired outcome for you to be healed, God is going to grant us the desires of our heart in Jesus' name. So lay your hands on your body in Jesus' name. And I'm going to pray right now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise because you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I want to give you all the glory for everyone under the sound of my voice. And I pray, King of glory, that you stretch forth your hand right now. And I curse every sickness. I curse every disease right now. From the crown of the heads of the people to the tips of the toes, I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness. According to the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 29 to verse 30, the Bible says, look at the threats that the people are under, the threats of a premature death, the threats of sickness, disease, my King and my Savior, and stretch forth your hand that signs, wonders, and miracles may be performed in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Deliver your sons today. Deliver your daughters today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke every sickness. Satan, remove your hand from the health of the children of God immediately in the name of Jesus. I adjure you, Satan, leave. Pack your loads. Take all your sicknesses and your all diseases. Go. Right now, in Jesus' name, I command the blood of Jesus to speak better things on behalf of the people right now. Healing, restoration, and deliverance because we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Father, let everyone have a testimony of divine healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is someone you've been watching and you have been believing God for a child that you and uh, your partner is go you are going to have uh, a child together the lord spoke to you before the lord spoke to you before that you and your partner need to be married husband and wife and when you are going to be married husband and wife not partners husband and wife the two of you are going to be able to have children god is going to bless you in jesus name so i want to pray for you and you go do what god has told you to do go get married in jesus name father we thank you because you are a merciful god you keep on speaking and when we are wrong you keep on correcting us in the name of jesus they are desirous of a child but my King and my Savior, you don't bless a sin in the name of Jesus. So I pray for that wonderful uh, uh, man and woman that they will do what is right in the name of Jesus. Because when we're in the right standing with the Lord, when our ways please the Lord, you are even going to make our enemies to be at peace with us. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I curse the spirit of barrenness and I command it to leave right now in Jesus' name. From the crown of the head to the tips of the toes, I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness for the glory of God in Jesus' name. And Father, give them the strength 
to obey you in Jesus' name, to do what the Bible says we are supposed to do as a Christian, and then you are going to be able to deliver them. For the glory of God, amen. I want to pray for sugar diabetes. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I curse any form of sugar diabetes in the mighty name of Jesus. I command healing right now for the glory of God in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to thank every one of you for joining us today. So, TBN family, you are truly blessed, and I'm blessed for coming into your house today. So, please remember that in addition to all that you have heard today on this program, please always seek medical advice for your illnesses. Next time, we look further at the meaning of uh, Barak. Contact us if you have any further questions about today's study. While you are waiting for the next episode, you can catch up on demand on the previous episodes. Make sure you tune in expectant of a miracle. I will see you soon. I love you and my Jesus loves you unconditionally. God bless you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.